Look in my eyes for my mind state. I'm on the grind 25, hey. Money on my mind, that's how I play. If you got it now, this what I say. Another one, and um, of course, we gotta do this like we do every episode. What episode are we on? 26. All right, episode 26. Because <laughs> I never know, I can't keep track. <laughs> Don't touch my mic. Is it better on camera now? Sorry. What's up, everybody? Episode 26 of the Swerve City Podcast. It's Swerve, my TZ over here, and we got the lovely guest of Ruby Riot, MVP over here. Say what's up to everybody. Hi. Man, that's that's the introduction I get. Just and, and we you got, got a video trying. What more can I give? I, but no, I mean a build up, a proper. Come on, man. Right, you the you the oh, mic man. You the hype man on this one. Look at he said. Look at he said. That's off to you. You the mic. You the hype man. This is why he's who he is, and you know. I'm just like, oh, that was good. Hi. Who <laughs> <laughs> we? Okay. I'm just okay. happy to be here. Let me see. So let me see. How I can do this. All right. Yep. All right. We have across from us right now a man who is not only a legend. He is a staple mm. for us in the African American uh, African American community, for the rest of the community, for what he has done. This man has been entertaining me on television. Been a wrestling fan a long time. This man came out. I'm coming. Came out with the classic entrance. Has been in some of the most legendary rivalries you've seen. This man has been holding it down for us for what ten plus, fifteen plus in the game. I'd like to introduce to you the one, the only, Mr. MVP. Let's make some noise for MVP in the building. Let's make some noise, man. See, boy, see, that's what I'm talking about, man. I would do that for you. I would do that for you. you, you know? I would do that for you. But I also wouldn't have forgot to mention that he's almost one of the longest reigning United States champions in WWE's history. Ooh, of all time. That's an important point. All time. Important all time. I think top five, top five. in history. I mean, I'm up there with like with Rick Rude and 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 and. and, and and, and Lex, you know, like you know, 343 heavy. days. That's heavy. I'm trying to tell Apollo, man. That's heavy, man. You're trying to teach him, man. You're trying to, <laughs> trying to give him the game, I mean, man. He learned. Um, if he ain't going to listen, I know somebody who will. <laughs> and somebody else who raps who listens too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I, you know, all, all BS aside, that's one thing I can out the gate compliment you on is your aptitude. Because a lot of young dudes will say, hey, did, did you watch my match? You know, do you have some feedback for me? Or uh, They'll ask for input because it's the right thing to do, because it's expected. So they ain't really trying to hear what you say, right. you know, at, at, or, or, as long as it is beneficial beneficial, or, or not even beneficial, yeah. congratulatory or yeah, celebratory. Yeah. Like, oh, this was great. This was, but if you say, hey, man, this wasn't whatever the case may be. One thing you've always been good about is your aptitude. And if you come and you ask a question and you get a response, you see that. I've seen it. I've seen your growth. I've seen your maturity. And I've seen where you'll ask, and you'll get some feedback, and you'll, hmm, okay. And then later on, that that was discussed is put into play. And I, what I try to explain to people, it's all in the details, man. A lot of guys can do awesome off moves, and this, but it's the details. It's those little things in between. And that's where you're coming into your own as you start to break out. It's those little details. So I appreciate you, man. Your aptitude, man. Seriously, yeah. I didn't. I didn't even know. I, like it's, at this point, it's, I don't even know who's watching anymore. Mm -hmm. I just do, and I. But I definitely take in a lot of the stuff. Like I never also make the same mistake twice. I try not to. That's sometimes that's the it, aptitude I'm talking about. Sometimes it happens. You, you don't mean for it to, obviously. Right. Like you don't try to make that. Like right. um, But even if you do make that mistake, you should know. Like after. Mm -hmm. I did it again. Yep. Mm. I'll get it yeah. next time. So, but, and that that's what's helped me, like, move forward. Mm -hmm. And especially without your guidance, a lot of, like, a lot of things, especially what I'm seeing you do now on television is blowing my mind. And now seeing you <laughs> backstage so with you, seeing where he's boom, 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 Everywhere. here, 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 this TV, Everywhere. this, there, there. I'm like... I gotta, I gotta congratulate this man. I had to send him a text the other night saying, like, yo, yeah, I truly admire cool, everything man. that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, I would love to, at the age and like for future for future purposes, I would love to be in a position to where you are right now. You know that, and that's not too many of us that can say that 
they can even do half of that right. and at their prime. Oh, Not, can, you know what I mean? It's I, crazy. I can safely say that seeing all of the different roles that you've played, none of them are sacrificed from the other. Like you are all in in all parts of what you're doing. And so like when you see like you're every time, like equally. you know, yeah, and it's all equal and nothing's like, it's all great, like everything that you're doing. Man, I'm not just saying that because I'm sitting uh, next to you. And... Uh, you're just saying that because I put you over on commentary all the time. Oh, that's what he said. He says nice things about me. <laughs> now, that's flattering. Thanks a lot, yeah. man. I, that, that means a lot. And, you know, it just to at this stage of the game, to be back in the game like I am, I never planned on going back to WWE. Right. I had no intention of ever going back. We're going to get into that in a and second, so, man. You know, we're going to get into that. here and doing what I'm doing now, and I'm, I'm having a blast, man. Hold on to that, though, because we're going to get into that. But first, we got to thank Around Seattle, our sponsor for the podcast. Without him, none of this would be possible. You know, he got the banner. He got the microphone. He got the lights. He got the curtains. And he is still supporting us from afar. Absolutely. Even throughout this, like, tough times going on around the world with the pandemic and everything. Well, Seattle, we appreciate you. Thank you for everything you're doing and supporting us, even from all the way out Seattle. And you got to subscribe to the podcast. Where can they watch it? YouTube.com backslash Swerve City Podcast. So graphics coming back up soon. But you guys can check that out at YouTube.com backslash Swerve City Podcast. And if you guys want to know how to spell it, because you guys always ask me that, I'm the only one that gets this. That's how you spell it. See, there's one R. That city. It's not. That's how you spell yeah. city, because you'd be surprised. How many and, vowels in there? And, 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 and podcast. P O D C A S T. Podcast. There we go. There we go. Now, we're going to start this thing and get this rolling with uh, Miss Ruby Riot over here. What's up? Longtime friends right here, oh, man. Oh, yeah. And where do we start with this? Because I can't read your handwriting. For real. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> After 26 episodes, the truth finally comes out. <laughs> so, um, you know, let's start this from where you're at now. Recently, you uh, you just came back from injury, correct? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that could be debilitating to some people, depending mm -hmm. on what the injury is. You know, how how much time it takes to come back. Because that's more mental right. than anything a lot of the times. Your body's going to recover. But it's just that physical, that mental grind to get back to that point. Tell us a little bit about the injury and your comeback to where you're at now. Oh, um, so for everybody who doesn't know, I had um, two torn labrums in both of my shoulders. Um, I had to have seven anchors put in this one and eight in this one, and then I had a bone chip removed from underneath. Um, did, I had, did you do dive off a bridge? Or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, apparently, according to my surgeon, I had both injuries. For ten years, so yeah, I got that's it. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah, they like, they were yeah. they were from when I started. Like I had originated the tear when I started, but and then ten years of wrestling happened, and they just progressively got worse and worse and worse and worse. Yeah. And um, I had the first surgery, and then six months later, I had the second surgery, and then I was out for a total of about ten months total. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say this woman worked for a number of years with two. <laughs> Torn labrum. She didn't take off a month for turf toe. Okay? Just, just remind you. Right? I did. Uh, <laughs> Walking boot and all. Uh, it, but that was like, that was the hard thing about like the mental part of all of it. Like I, like shoulders were definitely tough rehab. It was, you know, like it was my first, I guess you could say like real injury. Um, and it was something that like, because I had dealt with it for so long, I kind of had a choice as to when I went and got it taken care of. Like, it's something that you can progress. It's not like an immediate, like if you tear your ACL or, or whatever, like an immediate thing that you have to have fixed right away. It's mm -hmm. something that like you can know about. You just kind of have to pick the time, which because the time wasn't chosen for me, the time was never right. Like I, I was like, oh, I got this to do. Oh, I got this to do. This can wait. Like my shoulders it can wait. My shoulders yep. can wait. And I put it off and I put it off and I put it off to a point to where like I could barely work out. I noticed it the most in the gym um, when I tried to do any like wide grip bench press, like my shoulders would pop out you of sacrifice place. Sacrifice something. Yeah. yeah. And like a lot of stuff in the ring, like I worked around it, you know, for, for a number of years. And it was, it was a, it was a tough 10 months. Um, I was home alone a lot 
and uh, mentally, I think it was, I had to like go down to like the deepest parts of like me and like here. And like, I had to actually like seek out and get some, some help. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, I like, I've just recently become more open about this because I think this is something like mental health is definitely something that I feel like because we don't talk about it a lot, people think that, you know, any kind of mental illness or disorder is wrong or is bad. Um, so I, I like to be open with it. I have adult ADHD, I have anxiety, and I sometimes suffer from depression. Um, and so like that kind of recognizing that and like being like, okay, this is what I have now, what am I gonna do? So, like got to see a therapist. And so I was doing like my rehab for my physical therapy, but I was doing my mental therapy as well. That's and a muscle too. I, I came back and I, yeah. like, I, I felt better. I felt like I felt good about, you know, where I was and how I felt physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, however you like want to say it. But like I, it was definitely something that I felt like needed to happen in my career for me to get better in all aspects of my career. So. Wow. So would you say that during, who would you say that during this time was like your biggest support system? Oh man. Um, my biggest support system, my biggest support system I feel like is always and will always be my dad. Um, my dad's my best friend in the whole world. He's the coolest dude. Shout out to dad. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, happy belated Father's Day. By oh, the way. yeah. Yeah, happy yeah. belated Father's Day. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Appreciate it. Especially yeah. fa- fathers of daughters. Yeah. We're especially. Two. Oh. Especially One. fathers of daughters. A daughter. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, um, no, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's put up with a lot from me, but um, and he's not always supported wrestling. Um, it was never his first choice for me. As a father to a daughter, I get it. Yeah, I can I can understand it. <laughs> I can understand it. And yeah, well, first, your daughter comes and and her hair is green and she's tatted up and she's straight she punk rock it. and you're like, first oh, off, your pants legs ain't even yeah. even. What's going on wait, out there? Wait, 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 what's with the plaid and the chain? Yeah, what's, yeah. what's going on? And then you want to be a pro wrestler on top of yeah. it. Uh, yeah. I dropped dad. out of college to do it. Too. Oh, yeah. how was that news to him? I yeah. bet he was devastated. Oh, he was. He had a hard time with it. He's still like that. Bless his heart. Like even after all of it, after everything, like he's he's you know he 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 loved. I used to have like hair down to here that was light uh, brown and spiral curls. And it was like this mm. beautiful, just like when I was a little girl, and See, that's, that's what the he sees. Look. Yeah, that's, that's what he princess. sees me. Yeah. And then this, his <laughs> daughter shows up, she's the covered in tattoos. Gay, like he asks him about my gauges all the time. He's like, oh, what, did, what did you do here? Like, like did you get any bigger? <laughs> yeah, it's every time. Like, you, do you gotta get any more? Like, so I, my first tattoo, the reason, one of the reasons I got my first tattoo, it was in dedication to him. So I, so he wouldn't be as mad. <laughs> That's I see, why I see I what you did there. Is that the so, proverbial yeah. backhanded compliment? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, essentially. So he wouldn't be as mad. I'm like, I got this. It's for you. It's the the song lyrics from "What a Wonderful World" by Louis Armstrong. He used to sing that to me when I was a baby. Ooh. So that's, that's our, like our song or whatever. So I got like the lyrics. I'm like, Dad, this is for you. Like this, and it's a terribly drawn. I got it when I was 17. Like so, he was pissed, but he was like, ah, you know, I'll say. But then I just started. I was like, I was like, okay, there's my gateway, and just covered myself. He's like, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. But. So I say to myself, what a wonderful world. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Uh, MVP over here, like, oh, have you ever, was that the tag? Yeah, essentially, hey, <laughs> like, since we're doing this thing, yeah. Uh, any serious injuries you ever dealt with in your career? Man, I've been incredibly fortunate throughout my career. Because I was trying to think, I'm like, I don't ever remember seeing him miss time. I've never had any injuries that prevented me from, from hitting the ring. Early, early in my career, I got clotheslined across the face and had my orbital crack. Mm. That sucked pretty bad. Um, that, that that was probably the worst. I mean, I've had all the bumps and bruises that we get, the sprains, the dislocations, you know. But fortunately, nothing I couldn't tape up, wrap up, and and work around as we do, mm. right? So, no, I've been fortunate in that regard. Well, thank goodness, man. Like, um, so who are some athletes that inspired you getting into pro wrestling? Or that even after you started, got to WWE doing all your thing, that people, the athletes that continue to inspire you moving forward in that. Oh, wow. Man, that's that's a list, man. Yeah. Because, like, the whole the whole um, portrayal of the MVP character 
is that he's a pro he's a pro sports athlete. Yeah. So I'm like, where did you pull these inspirations from? The inspiration for the actual MVP character, like sometimes I see people refer to to Wikipedia. Wikipedia is wrong. It's always, always wrong. wrong. Yeah. It's always. <laughs> it always changes. Yeah. It was people, based on people wrong. can change it. Anybody can. Change yeah, anybody it. can put That's whatever they terrible. want. Yeah, somebody put on there one time that I that I uh, that I attacked Triple H with a screwdriver or some, yes, something. Yes, you did. Something. Remember that time when yeah. that happened? Yeah, I, I was there. That I didn't go to jail for. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah MVP that, that, got wet feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm five foot eight. <laughs> right. well, I, no, I swear, for a while I was five foot eight on this chair. Oh, really? Maybe. Yeah, you listed at five I was five nine. nine. I was five nine on there before. I'm five three. <laughs> Just so we are clear. And well, Wikipedia listed some something about that MVP was based on Rod Tidwell and and you know. But that's not true. Rod Tidwell is pretty much what MVP was. All I did was look at the environment, and I had a tryout. I had a couple trials with WWE, and Johnny Ace told me, we like you, we don't have anything for you. Come up mm -hmm. with something that we don't already have that you can do. And I used to work on South Beach, and I used to do bodyguard work, and I used to bounce. And I would see these pro athletes come to the club like the world owed them something, you know. And, and man, I remember I, I, I saw Shaq, I saw Dr. J, I saw Barry Sanders, I saw like first ballot, led true definition, legendary Hall of Famers, nice, humble, cordial, and respectful. And then you see like the Dolphins' third round draft pick shows up with an entourage. <laughs> what, up? Yeah. Like, what, what you mean I can't get in with shorts? Like, dude, dude, who are you, man? You know, I know you can't get in with shorts, man. Get so out of here, bro. You want undrafted, man? So let a guy at the door be like, hey, you, 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 come on, come on. Yeah, and you yeah. gotta stop him at the door. Yeah. Like, no, 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 man. You can't let him be. Who are you, yeah, man? Yeah. Man, it's my party, you know. So you I think at the game Sunday. Yeah. I, you didn't see you at the game Sunday. You didn't see you. But, you know, around the, with, with the rise of Sports Center, you know, you had all of these pro athletes that every week you turn on Sports Center, there's some pro athlete that's saying or doing something stupid. You Get know? that attention. Like, I remember I actually did a promo one time at, at Deep South when developmental. Yes, when I, sir. I borrowed from Allen Iverson. I'm like, practice? Yeah. Are we really Are we really talking about practice? So I took inspiration from everything that was wrong with pro sports. All the pompous, mm. self-absorbed pro athletes. And I... Rolled that into one character, and I presented it to them, and they went, "We like that. Okay, let's yeah. do some business." So that's where envy. That's what inspired MVP. What what clicked with me with the character, like first off, was like the character never lost. Even if you lost, <laughs> you never lost. You were Levar Ball way before him. <laughs> like never lost. I've never lost. Like even like he clearly lost, lost this match, but the no, promo was like, "What you just see? You see my game? You see how I was moving out there? Well, I'm the best. I'm the highest paid athlete that acquired from SmackDown." I'm like, never lost. He's never lost. <laughs> and everybody hates the guy that's always winning. Even if you, even like the, the delusional ones that's like. Psh, I don't know what game you were watching. I scored forty points. You lost by thirty, but I scored forty points. Absolutely, like you lost, dude. I had like, a, I had a dude at a restaurant one time. It was the funniest thing. Like he was one of those, uh, I guess one of those. It's still real to me, damn it. You, know? you gotta love them. So he made some slick remark as I was, and I was actually cashing out, and uh, he made a slick remark about me getting beat by somebody, and I'm like, beat by who? Nah, nah, that wasn't me. No, I, I saw it. I watched you. You didn't watch me? Yeah. Not me. In less than five minutes, I had this dude standing at the restaurant screaming at the top of his head, I saw you! You <laughs> lost! I saw you telling me I didn't see it! And I'm just as calm as could be. Not, not me. It wasn't no. me. And people are looking, and this guy's all excited. And I'm like, hey, listen, man, you need to do something with all that anger, man, and make, maybe get your eyes checked because I didn't lose. And I walked out, this dude screaming, no, but he lost. he's lying. He's lying. I saw it. Right. So cool. And he's worked up. And I'm like, okay, he'll be boring me from now on. <laughs> <laughs> so but, but then he's also going to like watch right. everything on like the next match. He'll be like, oh, no, he's going to lose. Yeah. yeah. He's, yeah. yeah. he's going to lose. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. yeah. <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's, it's funny how times have changed, though. Like, once I got into the WWE, my first go around, I got called into the office for being a heel in public. Like, no, you're not a heel. You're a superstar. You're a television star. Mm -hmm. So I came in on that cusp where we, like, we That's stopped. That's though. Right, yeah. We, we at Deep South, we were still. Hey, when you're out of here in the neighborhood, you're still in character. You know, yeah. sell the character. But once you get called up, it's like, no. Nah, at that point, you're a TV star. So don't don't be mean to people. Mm -hmm. 
And there were a few times when you know, I got called in the office and I had to have that, that conversation because I was mean to people. If I was at a restaurant, you came for an autograph, I was like, nah, man, get out of here. Don't disturb me while I'm eating. Man, what's wrong with you, man? You know, people are like, mm. oh, I can't believe it. I was at the Waffle House one time with Truth in North Carolina after a, 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 a show. And this little kid came over and, it, and his people were sitting right behind us, a black family. And the little boy came over and said, I remember he was chewing. He was, can I have your autograph? I went, that's how you ask? Said, Get from around me, man. Your parents should have taught you some manners. That's not how you ask for anything. You're rude and disrespectful. Beat it. I heard from the table, oh, no, he didn't. Just, what? And then I heard one of the girls at the table say, oh, I wish Undertaker walked in here right now. Ooh. <laughs> but the cool part of that is yeah. now at this stage, all these years later, when I run into because I'm 46 now. So if I run into a dude that was watching me when he was in his teens, he's a grown ass man, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not in you know, that disconnect. So when the dude comes in like, yo, man, I was watching you when I was a kid. Yo, I used to hate you, man. Oh, I hated you. And every now and again, I run into somebody that goes, yo, I asked you for an autograph at a show one time. You tore my poster up and you walked away. I hated you, but years later, I was like, oh, man, that was awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, all right, cool, man. You know, so that's, that's a cool memories, thing. There's memories, man. I love that's that. That's what we do. We create memories yes. for people, right? I mean, you got your memories, mm -hmm. specific memories from, oh, man, I remember that one time I went to the show and they did this. and then, You don't remember who won or lost. No. Yeah. You just remember the show and the what happened, you know, yeah. who, who made an impression and who didn't. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, you know, going, going to that story, there's always a... A journey on your way up to you know to the mountaintop or whatever dream you want to accomplish. Uh, tell us a little bit about what adversity did you go through because to becoming a wrestler. What story? What stories? Tell me a little bit like a story that you had that you went through something and it it was a trying time, but you overcame it to get to your dream to where you're at now. Oh man, I, I the old broke hungry indie wrestler story. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I got a whole bunch of them. Share ours too. You know? Oh yeah. We we got them, you know, trying to make it happen. I, I, I used to sell weed to support my wrestling habit. You know, like I'd be on the road, and I mean, at that point, I'm, I'm my, I think I was at that point I was working on top in Florida, and I was making a hundred bucks. You know, mm -hmm. and I and I drove an expedition, so I'm going from Miami to Tampa to St. Pete to Orlando to Ocoee to all these you know areas. So I'm drinking gas, you know, so really at this point, like wrestling was an expensive habit, you yeah. know, a very expensive hobby. So I had a little thing where at certain shows it was worked out where, you know, you go over there and get your envelope and then go back in the cut, see MVP and get broke. Well, back then Antonio Banks, you know, get broke off of what you smoking off of tonight. And OK, now I got enough to get a place to stay, get something to mm -hmm. eat and gas to get back home because wrestling wasn't paying the bills. So in terms of struggle. You weren't doing the eight by tens and no, the t shirts at no, the time. Not that at was the time. expensive. And 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 that wasn't a really wow. Oh boy. Still clean. What? <laughs> hey man, that dude right there looks like he's ready to start singing for one twelve or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he looked like he roast you at lunch, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yo, Tony, yo, he don't want no problems. <laughs> no, nah, but at that time, like and me and Joe were talking about this. Yes. Like, we didn't have Twitter, we didn't have YouTube. We, the social media didn't exist yet. So, like, being a, making a living on the Indies, traveling on the Indies, wasn't really a thing. Like, yeah, I had that picture, Antonio. If if I was lucky, if I sold two or three of them at a show, you know, mm -hmm. for five dollars, maybe, you know, but there wasn't merch like that. So, you know, it, it was really, really a grind back then. And nobody was making any money. Everybody was. The, I had jobs where they would tell me, well, you got to work on Saturday. Nope. Okay, I quit. See yep. I told you when I took this job, I can't work Saturdays. Well, you got to work this Saturday. Well, you got to find somebody to cover my spot. I'm out. You know? mm -hmm. So that that was a common thing. You know, As far as any specific, we our stories are the same. I don't have anything specific. Mm -hmm. Right. But I do have one story that I like to tell, and my buddy reminded me of it today. I used to work at City Furniture. And at the time, I was really working hard on trying to become a pro wrestler. I quit working on South Beach. 
I told my boy Sean Stanley, who was an indie wrestler, he was a manager in the warehouse at City Furniture. I'm like, yo, man, I got to get away from the beach, the bouncing. I just, I, I just need a different scene for a while. So I got a gig unloading trucks at City Furniture, and that job absolutely sucked, man. It was terrible. But quickly, I you know, got the got some Haitian guys, some Central American guys, and I would just kind of organize them. Look, we can do this quicker if we do it like this. So somebody recognized, like, oh, this guy's got leadership skills. So they told the warehouse manager, Javier, hey, you know, this guy, he might make a good uh, supervisor. So Javier sees me and said, hey, I've been hearing good things about you. If you want to move up in this company, come see me sometime. I want to be a pro wrestler. Yeah. I don't want to work here, but I need bread. And I'm, mm -hmm. you know, supervisors make pretty good money at this place. And, it's conflicting. And the floor manager knew I was a wrestler, so he kind of looked out for me with weekends and, you know, scheduling or whatnot. So I went into the cafeteria and I saw Javier with his flunkies, his fellow floor managers. And I said, hey, Javier, uh, I'd like to talk to you about, you know, moving up. And he said, well, what do you want to do with your life? And I said, well, I'm going to be a professional wrestler, but until that happens, you know, until Vince calls, you know, I can work here. And he, this is exactly what he did. He looked at his buddies and went, Pff. if Vince calls you to work for him, the doors are going to call me to be their lead singer. And I went, okay, all right, that's cool, you know. Go to the loop. I got fired <laughs> not too long after that, yeah. you know. But fast forward, I came back down to South Florida to do a CCW show, my old home indie. WWE approved for MVP to come to CCW. And my boy Sean, of course, he came to the show. And I brought an MVP. No, Sean actually brought the MVP action figure. And I signed it, Dear Javier, mm. have the doors called you yet? And Ooh. Sean took that to work. Mm. Mm. That's so good. <sighs> That's mm. Bl oh, bliss. Uh, oh. Love karma at its finest. Revenge so, is a dish best served. But that's a but that's a good that's a good revenge though. Yeah. That's yeah. a positive. So mm -hmm. Some people try to take this revenge and throw it back in people's mm -hmm. faces and negative to downplay them. No, this is an uplifting one to yeah. say like, hey, thank you for inspiring me right. to make it here because yeah. no, 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 that one was a fuck you. <laughs> no, that was no, I, there was there was I got no inspiration from him. That one was just a hey, fuck you. I was trying to babyface this one. No, no, like, no, no, leave it what it is. Yeah, all right. Right. Hope you have the air. So, so talking about your outlaw lifestyle for the moment. Hi. We've had a discussion. Talk about outlaws. We we have a discussion when we were doing the photo shoot for the Black Craft yeah. uh, clothing. You were sharing some stories about your. How long ways? I'm so excited about. Oh, this. I was waiting. I'm like, and yo, no, no, no offense to you. I wanted to get to this oh, story I'm right so here. I, that's yeah. None taken. I want to get there too. Yeah. Oh god. Let's talk about your run in with the law. All right. Miss Riot. Set the scene. Words. Wait, name wait. so fitting. Right there. You didn't rip a tag off a mattress, did you? Worse. 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 There's something worse than that? Ready for that? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fair. Yeah. That's, that's okay. I'm 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 about to to paint Break a picture. Down. Paint a picture for y'all. Um so we're we're talking about we talked about a lot of things, a lot of stories. Which one in particular are you? I want about? all of them. Okay. All right. Well, I'm gonna hit you we with got time. the Give me her thing. With mm -hmm. O C W A, which is um I believe Outlaw or Outcast Wrestling Association. Too many letters already. Something <laughs> like that. I, honestly, yeah, it's, it's too lot. much. It's too much to follow. Yeah. Elkhart, Indiana. I'm from Elkhart. Indiana. For those of you who don't know, some of the watch some other interviews for that. You want to watch this interview, finest, this show for this. The finest bad indies you can possibly imagine. Did you say the finest bad indies? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I sure Cream of the did. crop. Elkhart, Indiana is about 45 minutes to a half hour away from like where my hometown is. So I took this show. And uh, this particular company, I walked in and I knew, you know, it was, it, it, I was super early just trying to get any work that I could, anywhere that I could. Um, 
and I walked in and it's like a, a garage, like a, um, <laughs> like a, like a mechanic garage is where the show is. Um, and I, there were like blankets like pinned to the wall of like wolves. There was like wolf blankets yes. on the wall. I'm yes. pretty sure there was like a deer is head. Is that like to set the decor? Like I think that, that was okay. the decor. Right. Like they didn't want to do wallpaper. They just chose blankets. Well, it's like a recording studio. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so, Whoop, um, dude, true. so. They recorded in the bag. <laughs> so we get there and uh, the promoter is this like this, this guy looks like he might be like on something because like his eyes he doesn't blink like ever <laughs> and it's like he's just like running around a million miles a minute he's like real thin guy and he walks up to us and it, first thing that he asks and this is how I know that this is a terrifying thing is first thing he asks is which one of y'all is a wrestler he did not know the people he booked on the show <laughs> so people forgot at one point they were so astonished that somebody would ask this question that people forgot to raise their hands because no one's ever been asked that you before. were processing that which did, one did, of y'all did, was did, asked, some of us had to like raise that? the other one's hand because you couldn't like believe that this man this man is asking this Couldn't question. Tell the rest from the popcorn vendors. And so he Was that popcorn? he had like put together the show or whatever the lineup and everything and he goes y'all I got an idea and I don't even really know who he was talking oh, to he just came up no. to a group of people. And in this scenario he the way he set this up he was about to blow our minds and he was like I want to do a show on the water. <laughs> We're going to put the wrestling ring on water jugs and then y'all are going to do your entrances on jet skis. And we're like, where's the crowd going to sit? They're, like, They're going to be on the beach on, in beach chairs, but, you know, they'll see the action. You know, they'll see it coming. And I'm like, we're in Elkhart, Indiana. Where do you think we're going to do? I, like, I just couldn't wrap my head around the idea that he was telling us. The ring us. starts floating away. Like, oh, uh, yo, there, oh goes there goes the match. There it goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I'm reminded, uh, don't lose your place. I, this is the perfect... A long time ago, my buddy Bruno Sassy told this guy, this wannabe promoter, same thing. I got an idea. And his answer was classic. How can you have an idea when you don't even have a clue? That's good. That's good. First I wish off, I would have said that. He wants him. to get a ring in On, on pontoons yeah. to float. Yeah. I'm like yes. the, the, I think his idea, like I want to say somebody asked him and somebody told him those those big blue, like, Jugs that I, I you know see what you're yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like that's that's 50 gallon was. jugs. So, yeah, they so would have put like upgrading from the garage. Yeah. So we're going from the garage to the to water, this. lakefront. Which, by the way, lakefront. But, there's there's no ocean within a long time, so it's going to be like Lake Michigan, or like yeah. a really small man-made lake, pond? or something, or a pond right. somewhere, or we're just going to be in a puddle, and that's yeah. just how it's going to work. Bash with the Pile customer. drivers on yeah. the pond. That's yeah. the name of the show. <laughs> Right. It's, let's do. Let's go right now. Um, but he, he was just he was the most entertaining man I've ever met in my life. And he then, <coughs> uh, second most, excuse me, third most. Oh my God, I can't. So he, just, he, he was just he was fourth. Say <laughs> <laughs> something like that in the room full of entertainers. I, wow. I met in a different kind of way. Okay, okay. Well, we'll uh, Mike yeah. the goat fifth. Uh, yes. You know. Yes, <laughs> I met in a different kind of way. Um, but he then tells a group of guys, um, actually, I'm going to backpedal to the um, the announcer for the show. Um, the announcer for the show um, started off the show with a prayer, which I'd never been to a wrestling show that did that before, but all right, more power to you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. They're going to go wrestle this, with these crocodiles. But this prayer rhymed, and he, he goes, we're sitting here, just a bunch of mutts getting together to kick some butts, amen. And I was like, <laughs> wow, okay, that's crazy. Um, okay, cool, hell yeah, let's let's do this. He reaches down, puts a cowboy hat on, and after this has all happened, he turns heel. I'm not even kidding, he goes, amen. Puts the cowboy hat on and goes, now all you sit down and shut up. And I was like, <laughs> what just happened? What 
it's just that, like this whole time he did the national anthem, like all the whole nine yards he had was talked about. Overcome by demons. But the cowboy <laughs> hat man did it to him, and it just, yeah, the hat was possessed. It had to have been. Like, oh. He just like went into a trance or something. It was unbelievable, and I was like, okay, we're was, here. We're here now. We're doing it. <laughs> then the 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 finale, and I watched this happen. So otherwise, I wouldn't believe it. I swear is he comes up to everybody and he tells everybody this spot that he wants to do. And he wants the heels to, <laughs> to douse him with lighter fluid, set him on fire, mm -hmm. and then gorilla press him onto the baby faces. This is the spot he wants to happen, I promise. With lighter fluid. With lighter fluid. Now, here's what actually happened. Okay, here we go. <laughs> here we go. In the theory. heels sprinkle him with lighter fluid. It's not a lot. They don't douse him. They, like, sprinkle him. And they set him on fire. And he's on fire. And they so grab that him. Achieved. They grabbed him. But because he's on fire, it probably hurt to grab him. So they just threw him. And there was no baby faces on the ground. <laughs> also, I'm pretty sure they were at concession stand. Like, they were at the concession stand getting, like, a hot dog. I'm like, yeah, we'll get you later. And nobody was there to put him out. This man is on fire on the ground. <laughs> and no one was there to put him out. So the I heels. Have no sympathy for just, stupidity. <laughs> the heels who just set him on fire had to get out of the ring <laughs> and pat him down. <laughs> I promise. We didn't mean that, dog. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> It was we just meant to heat things up. Unbelievable. Man. I've never up. seen anything like this. They also had um, pudding at the concession stand, and they spelled it P-U-T-T-I-N-G. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you this. Do you think that that promoter had heat? I <laughs> Excuse me. I got. Yeah. Oh yeah. Episode twenty six, there. I don't think I've ever gotten to tell that story. So, Thank you so much. So, hold on, hold on, hold on, so hold on. basically, so basically, Ruby set a promoter on fire because he didn't pay her. That's what we'll do. <laughs> Let's go That's that. Let's we'll go that we'll round. Cool. He but running with the law. Oh, that one. Gotcha. We said we had we talked about so much that we, oh, that yeah. was. Oh, yeah. Oh, take your time. Uh, so this will be on, yeah, this I will... thought you were going to jail for setting a man on fire. I, you okay. know what? In comparison <laughs> to what I actually went to jail for. I, oh man, right, I wish it, it was. Let's I wish it. it was. I wish it was for a different. Like I went to jail twice for driving with a suspended license. I swear. Okay, Tupac. It's the worst. It's the worst thing. It's, I don't even know. I didn't even know they arrested people for driving with a suspended license. Yes, they were. Yeah, it I happened to me. I didn't even know that I had a suspended license. And that'll happen too. I had my license suspended because I had insurance, but in the wrong state. I had it in the wrong state. They suspended my license. I didn't know it. I got pulled over. Wait um, a minute. Are you gonna get your teardrop tattooed right here? <laughs> I don't bail for out of jail, California. <laughs> <laughs> so embarrassing. I think it's great. I well, I got pulled over after an AAW show in Chicago. If you said I got pulled over after an AA meeting, I was no. like, no, <laughs> I don't tell you. <laughs> this is a bad week. Yeah. <laughs> After witnessing the man on fire, yeah. ooh. ooh. Well, that's why she ended up in the AA meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot cool. of fluid. <laughs> Couldn't deal with this. Uh, Afterwards, I started drinking the lighter yeah. fluid. And, and then it just, just all went downhill from, down from there. <laughs> <sighs> you, you're making license. my story so much like cooler than I For actually am. what it am. is, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I got pulled over, and... Uh, I, they told me I had a suspended license, and then she told me to put my hands in the car, pat me down, whole nine yards. Um, but it was in Chicago. So in Chicago, like, they got bigger fish to fry than a girl driving with a suspended license. So I was there. I was out in no time at all. So they took you to book it? Uh, yeah, they booked me um, and printed me, whole everything, whatever. And then um, I was out on bail, and then I had to go to court and all, all that stuff. Um 
I had to go to court and all that stuff. And then I paid a bunch of fines and I thought it was all squared away. And I thought my license was not suspended anymore. And then I was pulled over in Lib Lebanon, Indiana, oh. which is where nothing happens. So when they pulled me over, um, they pulled me over because I had a hubcap missing because my car was falling apart because I was an indie wrestler, obviously. Kind of love those. Yeah, and, pulled over uh, for a missing hubcap. Yeah, well, they had, there was a, um, a, a suspected drunk driver who had hit a mailbox on that, like, and it was the same description as my car. Oh, you fit the me. description. Oh, yeah. Whoa, <laughs> I'll tell you. As my well, car. now, your um, rap career is gaining each sentence. <laughs> <laughs> so she fit the description of the. Uh, she was driving a getaway car. Okay, keep the, going. This content is good enough for like six songs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So then, what happened? How, can you like cut out like all the true parts and just like put in yeah, all of the I'm things he's, so this. I look cool? I'm gonna write the song in third person. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, was pulled over. Was told my license was actually suspended again, but this time. Um, they impounded my car, they took me, or they cuffed me, they put me in the back of the squad car, they took me to jail, and they put me in the orange jumpsuit. <laughs> Is the new the, black? The cuffs that linked to your ankles. Like, <laughs> full blown, like, and I was like, what? The, I, I was, yeah. I didn't understand what the fuck was going on. Like, I didn't, I got, I, I didn't even have any of that. Shut like, up, like, convict! Hey, <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm mate! I got so scared right now when he started yelling. I was like, I'm sorry. Immediate. Um, but so when they booked me, um, they had to. Uh, they asked me if I needed anything out of my car. And the only thing I could think of is I got bookings gear. next week. Yeah. So, yeah. And so I was like, can I take my gear bag? And they took it. And when they went through it, they were like, what is all of this? I was like, I'm a professional wrestler. And they're like, oh, some guy has seen, um, one of our deputies has seen or goes to wrestling shows every Friday in Indianapolis. And I knew exactly where that place was because I'd worked there before. Um, and uh, so they booked me. Um, I can't make bail because I'm an out-of-state resident. I was living in Kentucky at the time. They can't. They can't Why? Uh, because I was, I was trying to get a job with TNA while working with OVW. Okay, all right. Okay, all right. I remember that. Worst time, time of my okay. life. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, that run around. Yeah. That run around. That was rough. That was a rough time. I'm waiting for um, the mugshot to come up. Oh, yeah. Oh, Mike oh, the goat. Man. Oh, do we have a mugshot? <laughs> what? Well, we got a mugshot? <laughs> man, what are you holding out? I don't know. So I'm like, do you have one? I don't know if you can find it. I don't have it in my possession, but I'm sure it might be yeah. out there. Whisper your name to him. Um, so he's like, uh. Le <laughs> Lebanon, Indiana. Indiana. I want to <laughs> see. I want to see this. Um, so see if you can find it. But um, meanwhile, I knew where this promotion was that he was talking about. And he was like, "Luckily, he's not on duty today." And I was like, "Oh, thank God." Um, and uh, so they put me in a cell with two other women that were not happy that I woke them up at three a.m. Um, I got, I got <laughs> into the bunk and I had to wait for a bondsman because I couldn't afford bail. And uh, this is another story I've never told on any podcast ever. So um, I don't think any of anybody even knew, knew I went to jail. I didn't. Um, but uh, so I, um, I'm waiting for to hear from my bail bondsman. It's it's late, obviously. And then they open the door, and they look at me, and I think they're gonna ask tell me about my bail bondsman. And this deputy comes around the corner and goes, "Well, hi, to Loveless. How the hell are you?" <laughs> and I was like. Oh God, uh. no! And I was like, "Well, been better." I can say that. And he was like, "Yeah, man, you you ever come back to WCW?" And I was like, "What is that?" I, I I I I it's gonna really depend on how all this plays out. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> uh, well played. And he was like, he was like, "Well, hope to see you there." And left. And then the guy's like, "Okay," and then closes the door. And I was like, "What about?" What? Nope. <laughs> and then so yeah, shortly right after that, I got like released and found a bail bondsman and all that stuff. And to be told, yeah. I would have went back to WCWO yeah. in the red jumpsuit. Like oh, I would have done that gimmick, thing. kept it going. Yeah, no, he's a believer like, now. There was like ten people at that, that show. I think they might still run. I don't know, but there's not a lot of people. They run every single Friday, and there's like oh wow, I love ten those places. There. <laughs> those, yeah, those, uh, yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, man. What, what was your arrest story? We all what? my my arrest story. Yeah. That's oh perfect. well, That's my my arrest story. That's hard. I was uh I was driving. I had my I had my ninety nine Chrysler. And that thing was fly too. I just had the system put in that thing too. I was bumping fifty cent. Lord knows I should have asked for it. Bumping fifty cent driving down the street. But I was bumping sure. get rich to die trying, man. I was bumping, I was riding. Next thing you know, yeah, I was like, oh, here we go. So my obviously my experiences, my feelings are kind of different. So I'm just like <laughs> Ten and twelve. <laughs> Ten twelve. That's it. No dash. <laughs> just, Beyond just, the steering. I'm just like, way. okay, off yes, officer, no officer. Yes, officer, no officer. So I'm like. You know, my license is suspended. I already knew it was. Yeah. You know, my thing, you know, I had to get to work. I didn't care. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I'm 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 sitting there, they take me, I'm like, so yeah, we gotta take you to book a booking. Man, what? Yeah, so they took me, they took me in there. I'm I got the cuffs on, I'm sitting in the back of the car. They call up my mama. I'm sitting there, I'm just like, hey, you got anybody? So I get my mom's number, I'm sitting there sitting in the back. Call my mama. Call yeah, it's the only person. <laughs> only person number that, that I knew at the time, plus, you know, I might have been under the influence of a plant. And, um, <laughs> you know, so I was, uh, you know, sitting there, and um, they took me to booking, and they was like, yeah, you have to pay $600 to be released. You can sit right here, but until you come out with $600. Yeah. Uh, uh, my mom report. called? Did my mom call? My mom call yet? But uh, that, that's it. Basically, I got the money. Bet you wish you hadn't bought that system, huh? Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. And I that's guarantee system. I didn't bump that gear to that trial on the way home. I was bumping, I was hey, bumping bro. Garth Brooks. Hey, bro. Quiet. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't our no priorities messed up? Man, All messed up, bro. I got, I got roped off one time. Coming back, I was actually driving back from Los Angeles with my ex-girlfriend, who was a flight attendant. And we had to get back in time for her to make her flight. And, you know, El Paso has that border checkpoint, like 100 miles within the border. Yeah. And, man, I'm coming back from L.A. So, you know, I, I, I had some. I don't, I don't, I don't know how we get down on this podcast. You, but before you said a plant, I don't, you know. I, I, okay. Man, I have some weed in the car. <laughs> okay, I got you. Man, cool. F it, man. I had cool, weed. Bro. Cool. Cool. Oh. <laughs> So when we get there, <laughs> the, the dogs alert on the car, and at first I was like, "Man, that's a rental car, man. That's 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 from L.A. You know, it's just legal out there, so it, it could have been anybody's." But my ex girlfriend was a resident; she wasn't a citizen, and she had to get to work. And I just see the look on her face, and I'm like, "Man, if they take this girl in the back <laughs> to have a conversation, <laughs> we ain't talking no more." <laughs> So now I cop to it. I see, yeah, that was my, it wasn't much. It was just, you know. But while I'm sitting in there, the lieutenant, that Mexican dude with his bars, and he comes walking through, and, and he, I see him eyeing me down. I'm like, here go this dude. You know? He sits down at the computer and starts tapping away, and he's looking at me, and he's looking at the screen, and I'm like, here we go. <sighs> A few minutes later, he comes over, and he goes, MVP. How you doing, man? And I'm like, Obviously, I'm not doing too well. And he goes, oh, man, don't worry, man. You're good. You're, they're going to come write you a ticket. You'll be out of here in a little while. He goes, man, you're not the only guy that's been here. Sabu's been here. RVD's <laughs> been here. <laughs> <laughs> so at that point, I was like, well, I'm in good company. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it was, I think, a $500 fine and a waste of about two or three hours that I had to sit there. So Yeah. Oh, man. Such a cool story. So we're going to take it back to Ruby. We're going to go back into the wrestling realm a little bit. Um. So when did you wait? What, what, around what year was it you first got it into NXT? Into NXT, mm-hmm. I got hired in t- January of 2017. I, my first day was my birthday. Actually. Really? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, it was a great birthday really cool. present. Pow! So, Pow! There that's not the mug shot I was looking what? for, but I'll take it. <laughs> hey, they got the thing on the wraps. <laughs> uh, there it is. You had to go through some there encryption codes to get that picture. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, talk so about hope, this day first of so all. So hopeful. Look at that girl. She's just so hopeful. 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 Um, and she's just happy to be there. Because, like, I... So, obviously, like, you know, the dream is always to get here. Yeah. Like, this is this is the top, you know. Um, but I I didn't... That wasn't even a fathomable idea for me. Like, yeah. I was like, I am not what they hire. So, I know that's just not even... Like, I didn't even, like... Like I try to even look at it because I just knew that I was not the type of girl that they hired. Do you think that's the reason why you get this opportunity? Maybe because you're not what the 
I, and I think I, can, I, I was just one of my things I say all the time. I was in the right place at the right time. Very like true. this is a time for women that is the most empowering time because we're, you know, we're changing things. We're, we're showing you different kinds of women that come from all different kinds of walks yep. of life. And, and it's an amazing time to be a women's wrestler. Um, but coming up, that's not what I saw. You yeah. know what I mean? Like I didn't see women like me. Like you know what I mean? Like I did see like Lita had like you know she was all turned. She had yeah, she was the and one. Stuff, but like yeah. she was also still she was gorgeous and she like I don't know like I just she could actually wrestle. Yeah, and she could go and like I love that. But like I just didn't think for me I was like I'm you know, small town kid from in, from Indiana like what, what, who would want to like you know what I mean in a division full of like women who are like these gorgeous supermodel kind of girls like it just wasn't me and i also am not gonna lie i'm not good at trying to be sexy <laughs> i don't know how to say that without just outright saying it it's just not something that organically comes across when i work for ovw um like obviously when it was with um uh TNA. I don't know. She's pretty sexy to me. Oh, stop. Yeah. <laughs> He's so nice. Oh. Um, but, like, when I worked, like, I, they were having me wear, like, they, you need to wear tighter clothing. You need to stop wrestling, like, yeah, uh, like, heard those. Uh, like men with boobs. That was what I was told. Stop wrestling like men with boobs. And I was like, what do you want me to wrestle like? Wrestle like a woman. I remember those. Like, what, what are you, what does that mean? Like, I was trained, the way I was trained, my, my trainer, Billy Brock, taught me. With the boys, work like an athlete. Yeah, work, like work you like work, an you work like an athlete. Like, like you, you belong. Yeah, in there. like that's that's it. Like work like you would with everybody. Like you don't. I, I didn't. I wrestled intergender wrestling. I did. I wrestled men and I wrestled women. <laughs> and like and I, and I, I I get the disdain for it. I get it. But like I but like you know what I mean. Like I think that if you can convince whoever your opponent is, like to just treat you as like a smaller competitor, mm -hmm. and like we tell that same story. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like you're doing your job as a performer. You know, you like you don't look you look at me as a small performer, not as a woman. Like, because I'm weaker, because I'm a different sex. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. Well, there's a whole biology thing, but you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. See, then you said something nice to me, and then you go and say something like. I'm a heel. Have you heard my stories? <laughs> Waffle House. Waffle House. <laughs> Come on. But. <laughs> But, like, like, I just didn't think it was possible. And then, you know, I... Like, and, and what I noticed, well, this is all the things that I come... Like, I always, like, see every 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 uh, component to the roster. Mm -hmm. Like, this person provides this. This person provides this. Right. These two, like, cancel out each other. Mm -hmm. That that right there provides something. We just you know, perform one ev working, beautiful Everything machine. is a piece that provides something. Mm -hmm. Even if it's three of a, one kind, mm -hmm. all those three provide something to mm -hmm. this. And from this, just from seeing you, boom, to where you are now, mm -hmm. you inspire the Shotzi Blackhearts mm -hmm. to come up in the next, in, as the, the next NXT well, talent. You're an innovator. You know, you know, that's something like, man, this archetype works. You mm -hmm. prove that. Lita mm -hmm. proved that in early yeah. 2000s. Oh, yeah, for sure. 99s, 2000s. Yeah. You proved that in 2017 mm -hmm. that this works, you know. Yeah. So now Shotzi's going to prove it in 2020. Yeah. So are you in the in main roster yeah. and all that stuff. So there's the evolution of that. So what I'm going to ask you about, like, do you see yourself in leadership roles to NXT, the performance mm -hmm. center, the, the girls down there now? Do you see yourself, like, communicating with them much, giving them some of the advice that you went through. Things changed, of course, yeah. from when you were there yeah. to what it is now. Well, I was honestly, like I said, my whole career has been right place, right time. I was honestly only in NXT for nine months. Yeah, I remember I this. Was, I, I was hired. My first day at NXT was January 9th. Um, and then I was called up on um, November 21st um, of that same year. Mm. Um very fast. And that was when the Riot Squad debuted. And, uh, Riot Squad. <laughs> to call the Riot Squad. Um, but, so I didn't have as much experience in NXT as I would have liked. Um, I, like, as much as I was very happy with the position that I was in, mm -hmm. like, I would have would have never said no to it. I was really happy with it. There's a camaraderie in NXT that, that you know, that I, I, that I can see and I can feel when I'm there that, like, y'all are just... <laughs> 
like you know what I mean like you're you're proving something it was it was a it was a familiar feeling it was like you know it wasn't I don't want to compare it to the indies but like it's mm-hmm. that com- that indie camaraderie of like we're here like we're proving it day in day out that we're doing this like you know what I mean like it was just it was this grind that I just yeah I loved and I, and I that's one thing I do I'm I'm sad that I missed out on a little bit but as far as being a leader um if anybody like approaches me and like asks me questions, I will always answer to the best of my ability. But like, if you know me personally, I don't know why, and I don't know if it's because like I held some of my my veterans to such a high standard that like I don't feel like I am what you would call a veteran. And I also have only been with WWE for four years when there are other women that have been there longer, even though I've been wrestling technically longer, but WWE is its own mm-hmm. entity. So you know what I mean? Like, I I don't carry myself, I feel like, like a veteran yeah. um, to anyone. And I just, I don't know, like, I feel like that's helped me and hurt me and, and different occasions. Um, and uh, I feel like it's gotten me treated a little bit like a rookie sometimes. And I feel like that's mm-hmm. also mm-hmm. shown, you know, that I, that I don't, like... I like that I don't I'm humble you know in a sense right. in a sense like I guess I don't know if that's but what like you know I don't know I think advice and like um if, if somebody, I'm asked for yeah. it but I don't unsolicited advice I don't I, I understand that. that but it's still perception mm-hmm. like I always look at like the best advice comes from different perceptions mm-hmm. of things yeah you know you're like I'm still going to ask you about a lot of things right. and I'm not, not even like I yeah. dabble in main roster with mm-hmm. 205 live but I'm not entrenched in mm-hmm. the raw smackdown locker room but there's still a lot for me to take from you mm-hmm. with your perception of how things move right i've never been to like a wrestlemania you've mm-hmm. been on one you know mm-hmm. i there's that's different perception yeah. so there's things Whoa. to take from that it is she, no, I'm, I'm, she's, I'm, I'm giving her some big ups right yeah. now yeah so she's Whoa. in my eyes you're my veteran oh, you know, boom, look at that i want a picture like uh, that someday what? and i want to work to have that what? Everybody want to know? Even, that was super cool. This moment was super cool. Um, I tapped out to Rhonda in two minutes um, at this exact pay per view, but one of my favorites. So it's a gear. Um, it but is hard. That is hard. the next night, at when I was like feeling kind of like I was happy, I was excited, I was on elimination chamber, but like you know, I you know I tapped out in two minutes. Like it, it I was a little bummed. Um, the next night, I main evented Raw with Rhonda. And had one of my favorite matches that I've ever had. On the Boom! Roster. Hey, shout out yeah. one time for the exploited Hell patch. Yeah. One time for Waddy. Yeah. See, see, he. he knows. One time for Waddy. Yeah. yeah. He catches all that, but man, like. I don't but, know. Yeah. I would consider you a veteran. You're my one of my veterans. I, that that is bonkers to hear. I need you it to is right? <laughs> right. Like you saying that to me after like I've come to you on the indies and been like, hey man. We watched my match. Like, I'm like, who like, was you watching? I like, uh, con- like I like for you to say that to me is mind blowing. Cause like I don't, I can't. I'm, I'm still that weird girl from Indiana. Like that's always gonna be me. So I can't see myself as that. So when other people do, like I, when I was hurt, I came to the performance center um, to do rehab and to get cleared and everything. And Sarah had me sit down with the class and was mm-hmm. like, hey, what do you think that we can do better to prepare people for, like, you know what I mean? Like, to go to Raw or SmackDown. Like, what do you think? That, and, like, everyone's looking at me and watching me. They and I'm the, like. They want the, they want the, they want the, oh, that dish, that yeah, scoop. I don't, they want like, the, feed us. I don't even, like, the fact that all those people were paying attention to me at yeah. the same time is mind-blowing. I'm like, I don't, oh, my God. And, like, I, <laughs> I said what I could, you know what I mean? But it was just. It was just it doesn't it, it it's a weird role for me to even try and get comfortable. That's, on. that's a position though that you're going to be placed in. It it it, it happens. Mm-hmm. You grow into it. You don't okay. Okay, I'm a locker room leader. Just yeah. one day you look around and, and I, I I went through this. You just look around. and You're like, oh, this, I'm, I'm the oldest person here. Yeah. Or I'm the most experienced person here. And you know, it's it's just it's not. It's one of those things that the people who want to be leaders don't need to be leaders yeah. mm-hmm. and the yeah. people who just naturally emerge mm-hmm. as leaders yeah i mean being a veteran as we know from working on the indies you've got that that person that works one match a month mm-hmm. for 15 years and brother i've been around 15 yeah. years and yeah but you've you've had a few dozen matches you know yeah. mm-hmm. you're working every weekend three four shots and you you're going you're going you're going that veteranship is one of those things that's defined by 
experience and presence. Yeah. And it's like a, mm-hmm. it's a thing you grow into. Yeah. My dad always told me that, like, you know, if, if you have to say you're something, then you're not that something. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. So, like, if you have mm-hmm. to say, hey, I'm a leader, like, no, you, 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 if you have to tell me, then you're really not. Like, you know what I mean? You got to show me. And, like, uh-huh. I've, I've always kind of, like, yeah. felt that way like, about, like, I don't. Oh, oh, you've been rapping? Man, um, 16 years. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you'd ask Lil Nas X for some advice, though. Yeah. Like, anybody who's at a certain at a certain point certain level of a certain success. level yeah sure. yeah absolutely cuz i cuz i don't he i perceive the business as a respect too like you yeah. know you respect yeah. somebody's respect work somebody, you respect you know, somebody's work no matter what i would ask Lil Nas X to just do us all a favor and never make another song again that's what i would ask. <laughs> <laughs> no do a song but let me be featured in it <laughs> i'm I, you know hey. okay well there, right, there's you know. something to get from from it hey man you know, Garbage sells, man. It's popular. Hey, man. but if I'm the hotness on that garbage, I take these. I'm just saying, you take the payday. You yeah. take the payday. I get I it. I think you take I the opportunities it. when you get I don't it. Know what's happening right now. I like you, Lil Nas X. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know the guy. I just don't care for the I, music. I actually met him. I mean, he might be a great guy. So I'm not disparaging I mean, the guy, but right. the, the music is just like uh, that's painful for him. But also too, it's, it's a good it's old a, town road. It, it brings um old town road uh, oh. a good a good point though. And what you and what you said. That's a, that, that thing slap, oh, boy. Oh, Look at that. Oh, oh, I don't. I'm gonna ask him where he got I'm, the hat. I'm so sorry, but I don't like that song. That thing slap. It's just got the remix on right but here. The, 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 like, uh, there's so many t- like weird. Yes, it slaps my eardrums with its offensiveness. Yes. It just. It hits my nah. just, mo- but like, I, and I, and I don't mean this in any disrespect. Yeah, most vocal, country right. hits my ears wrong. Most country, yeah. not all. Right. Most oh. country like hits my ears wrong, and Would I can't s- hear it. Funny thing we, we talked about this before, uh, and I heard this before. Would you say he's appropriating country? The, the country that music fans song, have made that right. argument. That particular song, I, I, I country I music fans really have made. Well, isn't that why uh, how, why Billy Ray Cyrus had to do get on the remix with them because mm-hmm. they were saying that's not country, it so they kicked they it off. They wouldn't qualify this as a country song until Billy Ray Cyrus got on it. Then it got qualified in the country hits. Then it became a number one country song. Mm-hmm. So it was already number so, one, and then it made so number one like, again. Country. So at that point, Billy Ray is the one who gets to decide. Whether or not yeah. something's, but would you say he's a no? I don't think music. he gets to decide as much as him being a country music artist okay. validated this as okay. a country song. Okay. So I guess the I've, the opposite I've, would be if, and I, I'm just throwing this out right. here, I'm trying to spitball. If Toby Keith yeah. made a rap song and people go, "Nah, that's not hip hop." Yeah. And but then, but then Nas would. came on and said, "No, nah, I'm gonna do a verse with you. We gonna get this on the rap charts." Yeah. yeah. Now, would that be that? That would to a lot of every uh, everybody who's a fan of hip hop. They say he's appropriating our music, mm. cultural appropriation. Right? Mm. Would he be appropriating country? Well, the question with all that to me is: it is it appropriation or is it embracing? You know, like there's that, two sides of that. Yeah. How do how do you define what what where, yeah. where, where does appropriation end and embracing yeah. begin? You know, everything is a, a little bit appropriated. Has a little bit of appropriation in it. You know, like right. how, how do you I, I don't know. I, I, when I when I hear that argument, like mm-hmm. I get it and I understand it, but that's a great but I also but want to demonstration know the right there behind it. You know right. what I mean? Was it inspired by country? If it was, like that's where, exactly. Like, you know but, what I mean? Like, and there's no way to actually tell that yeah. until unless it's, it's, a, it's, yeah. a, it's a lot of blurred lines and things that naturally give blurred a, lines. A, a good uh, off. <laughs> I know you want me. <laughs> oh, sorry. A lot of um, a lot of feeling. <laughs> like, any, Anything that like invokes a feeling, like wrestling, music, it's it's a lot of it's a lot of like blurred lines in, you know, like, in those is, statements. Was Jimmy Wang Yang appropriating cowboys? It yeah, was he appropriating country? No, uh, Jimmy Yang Yang, Jimmy Wang Yang was cashing a paycheck. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do? You got it, and that was the end of that. <laughs> I ain't mad at it. <clears throat> so, um, to piggyback off what I was asking Ruby, um. In your retirement, were you seeing a lot of talent that you would say you, younger talent on the independence and even in the locker room today, that you feel like you have like a connection with that you see like, okay, you relate to this person a little bit as far as like the next upcoming talent and core guys? Oh, man, I'm, that, I'm, I'm glad you, smart guy, perfect opportunity for me to put him over a little I, bit. I, see how I he did that, serve that up? I saw yeah. it. I saw it. <laughs> He's done this before. Um, <clears throat> so 26. 
Well, I'll say this now, and I've said this to you before, and I'll, I'll say this to everybody watching. We had an opportunity to work together in Defy. And <clears throat> people who know me know that Seattle is one of my favorite cities. I love the Emerald City. I love the people. I love the vibe. I love Alki Beach. I love Queen Anne. I just, I love it. Love that area. Great city. And uh, when I got a chance to work at Defy, I had, all, I had heard about Defy. Heard about the fans. Heard about the venue. And uh, I had spoken to, uh, uh, help me out. Matt Farmer. Matt Farmer. Thank you. Matt Farmer. Love you, man. And <clears throat> I told Matt, man, I'd, I'd really like to work with uh, with uh, Swerve. And he said, man, you know, we'd, we'd like to have you do that. We go, yeah, man, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's make it happen. And uh, he even sweetened up the deal. He didn't have to. But I, I am a huge fan of Steely Dan. If anybody in here doesn't know Steely Dan, you know Steely Dan from hip hop, from samples, but you just don't. Yeah, know. very true. So absolutely, they very hooked true. me up. Matt Farmer arranged for me to get tickets to the Key Arena to see Steely Dan and the Doobie Brothers before our match. I think it was like a Thursday, and then we worked what was it like Friday Fridays, or something. Yeah. And, Hold on, Michael McDonald was with him. No, he was Michael McDonald was with him. I kept waiting, hoping he would walk out from the back. <laughs> he came from somewhere back in the long ago. Um. But we had one of my absolute favorite matches. And I've had, I'm at the point in my career where I can say now I have had thousands of matches. Mm -hmm. But the match that we had that night was without question one of my favorite matches. I watched it back a few times and I was like, damn, that I had fun. It was exciting. We told a great story. That's me okay. learning a lesson. <laughs> Boy, what I tell you about that, that shoulder tackle ain't gonna work. If I'm not mistaken, I think I ate a kick right after that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think I hate a kick. Like, a kick <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I've seen this happen before. And and up. and he said, I'm not gonna let this old mom talk to me like this. You have veins sticking out your head right here. Oh yeah, he yeah, meant, he meant fired up. Word. It was fired up. But the beauty of it was when it was all said and done, when the match was finished, um, I said then to the Defy audience, I said, man, you know, my, the clock is ticking. I know my time is coming there. But I can say right now, as I get ready to leave this business, it, the business is in very, very good hands with guys like Shane Strickland. You know, and I just, and I, as I was saying earlier, your aptitude, you study, you make mistakes, but when those mistakes are brought to your attention, you correct those mistakes. You push yourself. And there are guys, like I remember Ricochet, mm -hmm. I used to say all the time, man, if he would just slow down and, and figure out a little bit more psychology and not do shit just because he can. And I watched his maturity. And, you know, and that match that I saw you guys have at a company who I won't mention their name because I'm not trying to put them over. I said, like, man, look at, I watched both of the, the maturity in you guys mm -hmm. as you were coming along being from indie-rific guys that could do gravity-defying ish to storytellers. So, not saying that you weren't before, but there's levels to everything. Right. So, you know, you look back at your work from a few years ago that you thought, man, I'm spitting. And you go back yeah. and you go, yeah, that, was, that, that, that wasn't as good as I thought it was. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely. You know? mm -hmm. Absolutely. You go back and you look at matches that you had when you thought, oh, man, this is a, this is a, and then you go, ooh, I wouldn't do that. Why, why, why was that? What was I thinking? Absolutely. What was my head space? What in the do you have a match like that? Oh God, I have so many. Most of my indie most, matches, right? most. most of my indie matches, I watched. And I was like, what? Like, why? Just why? being here, especially like, like, and learning from some of like some of the the, the greatest of all time, changes your perception of what it you does. thought was cool. Yeah, and like what you thought made sense, and like worrying about if it made sense because mm -hmm. I didn't really do that. Stop and think about this. And this is what I, I try to tell mm -hmm. some of the young guys sometimes. Like, you can do amazing things, and that's awesome. But is that amazing thing that you're doing going to get an emotional commitment from the audience? Bray Wyatt does not wrestle anymore. Bray Wyatt entertains. Mm -hmm. Bray Wyatt has become a rich man with characters. Yeah. Bray Wyatt favorites. can't do a 450. Talk. But man, that, that give him the mic and let him be his per and, and people want to see that. Yep. When I came back as a producer and I got to do a few indie loops, 
His entrance. They want man. The people wanted to see the entrance. I was, and I was they there. wanted to see the fiend. They wanted to see bit 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 bam boom. Song, say good night. It's over. That's all they wanted. And I thought, song, no. damn, oh. right? Oh, it's so what, good. What the crazy thing was is like, um, especially when I started doing two or five and coming up to, um, on the road with everybody, I loved waiting till the last last. I was the last person left to leave. I loved it because I got to see Bray and I got to also like. Everybody's gone, everybody's busy or mm. was busy, and everybody's like already on the road to the next town. Mm-hmm. I can I can talk to him now. Mm-hmm. He's not busy. There's no pro, there's no producers, there's no writers like da, 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 on him. Now I'm like, I'm gonna ask him something. Or Roman, I get to like Dude, that's one of the biggest changes from when I was here last time till now. Yeah. When I was here the first go around, you had to stay and watch the main event. Yeah. There was no leaving early. Mm-hmm. You know, your ass better be in there watching Taker work. You mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You better be in there watching John Cena and Randy Orton. I know? loved that. And I still to this day yeah. love that. I'm like, oh, I get to see like especially yeah. I already went and now I get to sit and like really watch. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm like and sometimes I get to like get back and like Look at the atmosphere I'm in yeah. right now. And I'm watching this here. Yeah. And I'm like, I belong in here yeah. too. It's not like, oh, this is a guest pass to get back here. Yeah. That don't count. That's cheating. You work here. I belong yeah. here. Dude, you the, know? the progression, as as you know, because you've done it and as, as you're, you're going, I remember very clearly being at home. My, my ex-wife was the biggest Undertaker fan. She would get hyped. She didn't even like wrestling till I started doing it. And then she was questioning, I don't want to do this, to jumping up and down. Oh, Undertaker! <laughs> you don't get that excited in my matches. <laughs> <laughs> when that gong would hit and the lights go out and you get the goosebumps and you're like, oh, there it is. Fast forward to now I'm in developmental. And very different from the performance center, how it was. You know, But if it was within 300 miles, if, if – uh, WWE show was in 300 miles. We had to make the drive to the show. We yep. had to go. And I remember the first time being in the building, standing in the back, when the lights went out and gong, mm-hmm. like the goosebumps, like, oh, That's a damn. Pop- one sound mm-hmm. got people's gong. reaction out of their seats. That is that, power. It's that. It's like, it's, the, it's the, the moment that that music hits, that that gong hits. And that and time. And the eruption <laughs> That happens immediately after yep. lights go out. That happens, and the eru- it's just there's nothing. Now I'm gonna like fast forward feeling. one more time to going from being at home watching, from being in the back watching, to standing in the ring when the lights go out and Ooh. the gong hits. That progression. Every night I got goosebumps. Really? Every night. I love and that. to your point, mm-hmm. I belong here. Yeah. You belong there. The dead man's coming for me. It's not an accident. Oh, like, this isn't. Yeah, like I, I made it. I'm here. That's we dress cool. in the same locker room. This is my peer. This is who you this, belong this is, there. I, you're, you're here for a reason. Yeah. You did what you had to do. People said I can make money with her. You've mm-hmm. been given an opportunity. When you stand in that ring, you're a WWE superstar. Mm-hmm. And to make that 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 journey from Elkhart, Indiana. Mm-hmm. To Madison Square Garden. That's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. It's time to take it to Teezy's table where you can have some fun with these lovely guests well, of the evening. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to get through this. So tell me, you know, when you guys are on your road trips mm-hmm. and you are, uh, you're on that long car ride to the next town, what music do you have to have in your car? What's that car ride music? Uh-oh. It's about to get good now. Yeah, what's yes. the? I, I would like first to hear this answer. Yeah, what's the what's the car ride music? You you on that you on that trip? You got that three hour drive. Because we speak about music most of the time. You you are the most varied person that likes all of sorts yeah. of music. Yeah, my, that I've ever met. And and so that's I'm why I would say the car ride singing. music would depend on who I'm riding in the car with. Mm. And because oh, so you're nice about it. Well, I mean, no, we're gonna listen to some of my issues too. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but <laughs> but I'm not I'm not gonna hijack the car. No. I, I you know like no because I but I like all kinds of music. True. So if if I'm riding in the car with you mm-hmm. and someone else, then like hey man, you take the wheel for a while. You run it. You know like mm-hmm. um you know riding with younger guys. I don't like a lot of the newer rap music. I'm you know I'm. I'm 
I'm shaking my, you kids don't know good music. Yeah. I'm that guy. <laughs> <laughs> but I have young dudes that put me up. Oh, man, have you heard this guy? You know, so I'm cool. Let's ride and put me up on some new stuff. Yeah. You know, I just learned about the Flatboy Zombies a couple of years ago. You know, so I'm like, okay, some of this new stuff is good. You know, like, so when it comes to car music, I got what I like, but I like a little bit of what everybody likes. Mm -hmm. So I, I can, I can There's get There's something there. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, in every yeah. genre. Absolutely. So what is it what is it about I have to ask you this as well. What is it about that uh the music that has changed as you are, you know, you probably grew up on the pox and the biggies and stuff like that. What what Rock him, man. Rock him Rock him's Rock okay, Rock him God and, MC and uh mm. and Kane and them, right? So that time, Kooji Rap, that time. Okay. So what is Gave what is, my man power for four bucks an hour, took my time, I wrote rhymes in the shower. That cool G. Okay, I'm sorry. You sound man. like Dolomite right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one that set it off. <laughs> So, um, mm -hmm. what is it? What do you feel is the disconnect? Is it just what the, the young guys are talking about now? Or? Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, content, I, I, and here's the point where I'm gonna be cut. Nah, because we had garbage content then too. You, you know, you had garbage. Yeah, it was trash rapping. in '96 too. We not yeah, gonna do that. You had, yeah, you had all kinds of garbage. You had garbage. Yeah, it's been content. garbage been from '79 to 2019. I do this 16 years. I know what I'm talking about. I, I, but the, the garbage, <laughs> the garbage then was like, like, um, like. Fat boys talking about burgers and stuff like that. That was like the but, garbage. But see, even though the fat boys were garbage, they were groundbreaking. Because at that point, there was nothing like it. Nobody was doing that. Nobody had heard of a human beatbox and dudes rapping yeah. about how much they like to eat. It was groundbreaking yeah, like, and it was new. So there were people that, oh, this rap stuff is garbage in general. But at that point, you talking to me, man. I, when rap wasn't on the radio, there was no rap. There was no rap yeah. station. On on the oh. black on the black station, <laughs> you heard on the on Saturday they played a few rap yeah, songs on the I radio. That. Prior to that, there was none. So, this I guess a lot of the stuff. And I man, I'm I'm, I'm old, man, but I like I, I mess with Ricochet sometimes, you know, with his you tight must. ass clothes, you as know? you must. And I'm like, nah, I come from the Wu Tang generation, you know, we were bad. My generation rapped about selling drugs and killing people. Your generation raps about taking drugs and killing yourself. I can't, I can't empathize. You know, like I don't, I, I can't really. That like, that kind of throws me off a little bit. You know, not that killing people and selling drugs is good, but if I had to make a choice between yeah. selling drugs and killing people or taking drugs and killing myself, you know, I'm just... I'm just rap about being broke. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's what I knew. My favorite so, yeah, I, thing was Ricochet and his tight ass clothes. He's like, hold on, we are not going to zoom past Ricochet and tight clothes. <laughs> his tight We're ass clothes. We're not just going to get past. So yeah, I was like you know, I, I I'm, 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 no I'm in the lyrics, I'm in the flow. I got you, man. You know, I, I, I like content. I like that's why I like that. Make, make me think of know? different genres, uh, questions like that to see where their ear is at and why they feel the way they feel about that. Also, too, uh, give me some, give me guys some of your uh, some of your favorite albums. Send me some from your so favorite sorry. from your favorite either bands, <laughs> hip hop artists. What are some some of the go to albums you guys uh, have? Okay, so I, I'm I'm gonna be straight up with you. I I love. Punk rock is my, my deal. That's if your anybody, thing. Okay. Anybody knows me knows I love punk. But I am always nervous. This is something no one knows. I'm always nervous to talk about punk with other people, um, particularly people that are punks. Because while punk rock means, you know, you know freedom to me and means, you know, anti-establishment and just and, and is, is so powerful to me, and I do feel like it means like let's accept each other and, and just like you know, tear this up. I'm so sorry I cursed, um, but like um, I I'm I'm gonna say how exactly how Sami Zayn said it one time. I am not. I don't consider myself a a punk. I'm a professional wrestler who likes punk music because there's kind of uh, not a hierarchy I would say, but like there's kind of like a <laughs> a classification of what makes you a punk. Yeah. And there are different people who can decide whether or not, like, I didn't start listening to punk music until I was 19 years old. Would you describe it as, like, okay, I like gangster rap, but I'm not a gangster? It's, it's like, same thing. Like, I think all music genres, maybe, maybe, well, I don't know. Because you're punk as fuck. Uh, and, so like, I, 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 I feel like anybody can be a punk. You know what I mean? I feel like, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a good example. Like, you know, John, Johnny Cash was a punk. You know what I mean? Like, punk, punk is a state of mind. Yeah. And that's like, yeah, bring like, me into your world. Freddie Mercury was a punk. He was not what the societal norm wanted him to be. He he broke out and he made 
some beautiful music contradictory to what other people wanted him to be. And to me, that's what punk is. I'm like, to me, that's what I want to, like, I feel and like my emotions that I have behind it, but it doesn't, because I don't know. So like when we talked about the Bad Brains, Robbie Brookside introduced me to the Bad Brains Brookside. when I first got here. That man is Punk Yoda. Yeah, he is. He yeah, can he tell is. you yeah, he is. where any punk band is from, where, where they derive from, when their first album dropped, everything and anything. And he's probably seen them. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. And um, somebody was around when they, I hadn't heard of the Bad Brains. Somebody was around when they asked me, they're like, they made me feel bad because I didn't know who the Bad Brains As you was. should. Uh, you don't know who the Bad Brains, like, and like, I hate that feeling. Ooh. They're, oh, they they're awesome. They're awesome. Like they, they're these guys like, before. but the, they look like, familiar. That's the thing. Like, but that's that's not that's not the bad brains. That's 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 one of the versions of. But that's not the original. That's Daryl. That's Earl. I don't know who that is. <laughs> I, th I think that might be Joseph I, who came in as a singer for a while, and I don't know. Maybe he might have been playing the drums for a bit. I don't know. That's but HR. that's not HR. No, no, that's not HR at all. Like. And. I don't know. Daryl cut his dreads, so I don't know what the hell is going on right there. I just but know what they sound but like. bad brains for history. Like that's not find if you can find the album cover "Eye Against Eye," you'll see or, or "Quickness." You'll see a good quickness. Find a, a quickness album cover. You'll see what they look like. But my introduction to this music was I used to work with a guy who was a skinhead, and he was the one that taught me about the skinhead culture, and it's like, it's, all skinheads aren't Nazis, they're not all, you know, I didn't know anything about this. Mm -hmm. He used to give me a ride home, and it was his car, his music. So I had to listen to, you know, old school New York City hardcore. Mm -hmm. At that time, that just sounded to me like just some dudes screaming over Ooh, a guitar, no and like, what? You ride with somebody long enough and you got to listen to this music. After a little while, you find yourself kind of bopping your head or you find yourself going like, oh, yeah, no, I, I, I kind of like this song. It, the Exploited, mm -hmm. the patch she had. Yeah. The first song I ever heard from The Exploited, I'm riding with Wes. And just to give you an idea of like punk, I hear this guy say, you're going to have to bleep this out. But I hear this guy say, I dedicate this song to thee, Jello Biafra. Cause I fucked his wife. It's called I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. And at that moment, I went, I get that. I get it. I, I, yeah, I get yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Right. yeah okay. <laughs> there we go. That's the boys right there. Okay. That's HR, That's legendary front man. That's his brother Earl plays the drums. That's Daryl on the bass, and uh, Doctor No Gary Miller on the guitar. These dudes are from Washington D.C. Yeah. Ooh. And they played jazz fusion. Oh yeah. They got into punk before it was punk. They're the godfathers of American punk. Mm. So my boy Wes, at that time, you know, I'm, I'm Eric B and Rockham and I'm public enemy and I'm, he goes, yeah, yeah well let me put you on or something. Like you thought you, they was on. And I'm like, these are black dudes? Just, you know, mm. but their albums, because they are Rastafarians, they embrace Rastafarianism. So they'll have one song that we're talking about where it's Riot Squad! And then the next song is 4-4. Four, four. Mm -hmm. Rasta reggae. I love, I love Vaja. So their their imprint on American music, there's not a rock band alive that doesn't mm. revere them. And as far as the American mm. the American mm. punk scene, they're the godfathers mm. of that. So mm. people don't even know as far as yeah. punk. Oh man, you in that issue, man? You know how they got the name the Bad Brains? Because Man, y'all play that? Y'all, you got some bad brains, man. Something's wrong with y'all, man. You know oh, okay, 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 okay. You know what their original name was? Mind. Mind, mind power. Mind power. Yeah. Mind power. See? See? Yeah. Oh, I don't so, know. There's a reason why these two are the guests. I don't know. Together. Yeah, it's just, But to your point, I want to yeah. say this one thing finally. I understand exactly what you're talking about because I love this music. Mm -hmm. And I don't consider myself punk mm -hmm. and i have people come up to me yo mvp i heard you're a hardcore kid mm -hmm. i don't know that i consider myself a hardcore kid mm -hmm. i love the music i used to go to i still go to shows you know i'm, I'm agnostic front we yeah. talking to my boys you know oh, that's so cool. but i wouldn't call myself <laughs> yeah. a hardcore kid i wouldn't say i'm punk to, to, yeah. So I understand exactly what and you're saying, and it's it's like it's a fine line, but like I think it can can go back to like what we were talking about earlier, 
where I feel like it's one of those things where you like if you have to say I'm um, something, then you're not something. Mm-hmm. So like I feel like with punk, like you can just look at somebody and be like, that's a punk. You know what I mean? Sorry. But don't say that in Florida because it has a different meaning. Uh, apparently, <laughs> we learned that. There's a lot of things we can't do in Florida as uh, it is. And but, a lot of things we can do. So, so yeah. Hey. No, so I just... But, hey. but yeah, so we're going to wrap it up, man. We've already, like... Wrap what, it up. Off the cam- two cameras? Two cameras? Two cameras, two cameras man. Content, oh, man. That's it's added good. value. I love it. If, if, yeah. if we got battery life, I keep let you keep talking. But, you know... You know <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Oh yeah, I see what you mean. But yeah, so it was wonderful having y'all two here. Thanks for it was having awesome. Man, we it was a good more, time. We had more notes, but we never get through all of them. Nah, we we have extra. Yeah, just let problems. the conversation flow, right? Yeah, and that's what we do. Cause y'all conversationalists. You might not say you are, you are. <laughs> and then there's the god, the goat, the greatness, MVP. Better introduction. I'll take that. I like that. I like right, that. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Right. No, well, yeah. mine. You, the trailblazer, oh, the uh, innovator, yeah, the innovator, oh, now I got the new this. veteran. Uh, yeah, Vet that I'm Boom. Uh, the veteran. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, the comeback story of the year. Two bad shoulders. Now holding them both up in victory. I like it. <laughs> no, but, and in that picture right there, she looks like she looks like she's asking for lunch money. She yeah. looks like, hey, you know what time it is. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they gonna cash you a mean, girl, mean girls four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll do it. But yeah, so uh, tell everybody where they can find you. What's going on with you? If you got new YouTube content, I do. I do. <laughs> I do. I do. I, yeah, I started up a YouTube channel. It is called Hooligans Unite. I like that name. Yeah. Um. Actually, my one of my favorite punk bands, Rancid. They're um. They're tribute album is called hooligans united so i did hooligans unite um um because i love shout them. out to the old firm casuals yes oh my god it's so good one and, time for lars and also lars Fredrickson for letting me do that gear that one time in elimination chamber oh that yeah was dope, yeah. thank you thank you <laughs> um but um i just started that youtube channel and we're um doing donations for every month we pick a different organization um i'm working with a company called punk rock saves lives um, and we're doing donations um, and charity and stuff for uh, for different causes this month um, because it is Pride Month. I'm wearing Sonia Deville's shirt. Um, it's Pride Month. We're doing donations to the Trevor Project. So, and then we're just doing. I'm trying to have some fun. I'm gonna try and figure out how technology works because I'm bad at it. If you um, don't delegate. Yes, it's, I've, I've been I've been I've been learning all kinds of stuff. Um, the secret and to then being a good Twitter manager. and Instagram and um, all that stuff is at Ruby Riot WWE. You can find me. Nah. You can find me. Uh, I am at the three hundred five MVP on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I, I think I got like a Facebook fan page, but I don't really mess with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. Like, Chris pages. Chris Rock had a really good joke a long time ago. He said they came out with an app that'll tell you which one of your friends are racist. It's called Facebook. Yeah, I don't mess with Facebook, but yeah, I'm, it's working more. Yeah, than ever right now. Instagram at the 305 MVP, Twitter at the 305. Oh, I have a website, uh, the 305 MVP.com. Yes, yeah, I got some uh, nasal strips. (laughs) (laughs) Damn, that's a good picture. Why don't you do that? Why don't you do that? Why are you still nasal strips? (laughs) Uh, You know what? WWE, damn, hey, you know, main event gear, by the way, (laughs) main event gear. They, yeah. they, they, they've been making my gear my entire career. Shout out to Adam Roberts, Robert Adams. Um, Dan has dope. I, I, I need, I need a car. I need that as an eight by 10, man. Cause I still got some indie dates I have to fulfill. I still got some. Are so, there any indies right now? Well, when we come back though. <laughs> okay. I have commitments. I got, I got, I got, well, uh, 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 deposits. Oh. Uh, I got deposits. Yeah. Uh, this is true. And, and, and I have a Man. deal in, yeah. in, that I'm, you know, like, Hey, MVP, you keep your word, finish out your dates. So, you know, so I, I, I will be doing a few more indies mm-hmm. and then, and then, can I just clear up one last thing and I'm done. I never said I retired. I never said that. Everyone, didn't you retire? Didn't you retire? I never retired. I never said I retired. I said I was retiring this year. 
that's been postponed due to COVID. Mm -hmm. I said after my match on Monday Night Raw after the Royal Rumble that at that point, that was my last WWE match because at that point, I thought it was. And then I got offered a job as a producer, and then they started putting more stuff on my then plate. You got good at your job. Oh, then they said, so. Everything. Everything. So, uh, card subject to change. Career subject to change. Oh, hell yeah. That's that, always a thing. That should be a t-shirt right there. Hey. Career subject to change. Yeah. That, that is a good t-shirt. I like yeah. that. Mm. Mm. We over here at Sports City Podcast, we make things happen. We make your dreams happen. And now we're making content happen. So you just saw Ruby Riot and MVP on the show. Subscribe YouTube.com backslash Sports City Podcast and pledge on the Patreon. Patreon.com backslash YouTube.com oh, Sports City Podcast. You got it. I was doing all right. You do something. Uh, follow me at TZ Scott, man. Yeah. I got new music out, so you know. He do. What was the new track? Well, you, you know, um, Black, Boy. Black Boy is out right now, speaking on the current things that are you know happening in the uh, in the world right now. We have some content coming out, speaking on <laughs> some things that are happening in the world right now. So, you know, we uh, I believe the way I was taught. If there's something going on in the world and you're a musician, it's best you speak on it. Talk about it. And uh, that's I feel like that's my responsibility as an artist. And we both feel that as a responsibility as artists, as a group. So uh, stay tuned for that and the content that's dropping on that. You can get Black Boy on all iTunes, digital markets right now. You can get our album from you Humble Beginnings. Boys, and the man who uh, put it together. Mr. Get on the camera. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Ready this guy this has done all our lyric videos. Yes. This right here is now on all digital markets. Make sure you guys go cop that. The video is uh, directed, shot, cut by him. And this guy did an amazing job on the video. I'm Appreciate super it, proud. All our lyric videos, he has cooked them up. He has been a great addition to the squad, and I'm glad Swerve brought him up, agreed to bring him on. This guy is amazing right here. And man. he has on a dope-ass T-shirt. Oh, right, hey, I said that when I saw him. Love, man. What's your social media, man? Plug uh, yours. At all the X on Twitter, uh, Instagram, all the X visuals. And those are about all of them. There is Facebook, too, but I don't have no clue what that is. <laughs> I think that's just my name. For one And check out the uh, album coming, right? Fall. Absolutely. Album's coming in the fall. Erica's son coming in the fall. But we... Hey. And uh, Swerve City album two, album two, the holidays. Oh, wait, we are oh, we are oh, we are already holidays. cooking up. Oh, we already have an album cooking that? up. When is that? Holidays. holidays. Just the holidays. Just look out in the holidays. The holidays. Yeah, yeah. Which Fall. Holidays? We got Teezy, Erica, son, and we got Swerve City album two holidays. Woo! Holidays. I didn't even tell him. Oh, <laughs> we, we, we might. Oh, we might. Oh, we might. Oh, we might. I might not tell you this. We might put it out together. Like uh, the love below and stank on you. How about that? Double disc. Hey, double it's been a while, but I, 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 I I'll give you sixteen. <laughs> we got the body you right there. I'll give you sixteen. It's been a little while, but I, 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 I the studio right there. I'll dust the pen off. Hey, that's it. I want it. The pen's been sharper than over. And as always, be confident in everything you do. Wash ass. Or you gonna get a pop pop. Miss you, Ariel. Swole. Close at it.